In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform an SEO audit for any website in 20 minutes or less. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Joshua Hardwick here with Ahrefs. Uh, before I dive into this process, let me first introduce the tools I'll be using for this SEO audit. Uh, so I've got Google Analytics, Search Console, uh, PageSpeed Insights, Google Structured Data Testing Tool, uh, Hrefs, obviously, uh, Copyscape, a SERP simulator, and a web page word counter. And as you can see, I've got all of these already open in multiple browser tabs. So if you're following along with this video, uh, I'd advise you to do the same. Get all of these open and you'll be good to go. Uh, and this final tab is the website I'll be using for the bulk of this demonstration, which is simplelifeinsure.com. Uh, but obviously, you can use your own website or a client's website or whatever you want to use. Uh, so let's get to it. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check that only one version of the site is actually browsable. So right now you can see that I'm viewing the website at https colon double slash simplelifeinsure.com. But I want to make sure that this is the only location at which I can access this website. So all of the, all of the versions of the site should redirect to this version which we call the canonical. Uh, so first I'm going to check the non-secure version uh, at http rather than https. And straight away you can see that this does in fact redirect to the canonical HTTPS version, which is a good start. Uh, but now I'm also going to try the www version with and without HTTPS. Uh, so let's type those in, uh, HTTP, uh, that seems to redirect, and uh, HTTPS uh, with, with the www. Uh, so that also seems to redirect too. So there are no problems there. Uh, all of those different versions that someone could kind of type in are in fact redirecting to the canonical version of the site. So moving on, I need to actually crawl the website uh, so that I can check for any other issues. And for this I'm going to use Ahrefs Site Audit Tool, which if you're following along can be found at ahrefs.com uh, slash site dash audit. And uh, just a quick side note, you could use Streaming Frog for this or, or another crawling tool, uh, but Site Audit is probably your best bet if you're following along uh, with this video. And so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new project, enter the domain, uh, select the correct HTTP protocol, which in this case is uh, HTTPS, and then I'm going to hit next and uh, next again. Uh, so then on this, on this page I'm going to leave the majority of the settings here as they are, but I will actually check the execute JavaScript uh, toggle and the check HTTP status of external links toggle. Uh, this just ensures that we get the most accurate uh, audit. And then I'm just going to hit next one final time. So finally, I'll just uncheck this uh, option to schedule a weekly crawl. And finally, just hit create project. And that's it. The site is now being crawled. So while I wait for that to finish, I'm going to perform a few more manual checks. Uh, the first of which is making sure that the site is actually indexed in Google, uh, which I'll do by searching in Google for site colon simplelifeinsure.com. And it looks like there are around 222 results. And as I know this site pretty well, I know that that looks about right. But if you're following along with this and you have no clue whether that number actually corresponds to the real amount of pages on your website, then come back to this step once your uh, crawl in site audit is complete. So I actually already ran a crawl for this website uh, before I started recording this video. Uh, so to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go to the internal pages report in site audit for the crawl that I actually uh, completed before recording this video. Uh, and in this case, you can see that there is a small discrepancy in the number of pages um, being indexed um, compared to that, those that are actually on our website, um, which is actually being caused, as I've investigated this already, is being caused by uh, Google indexing a few individual elements uh, from the home page, which is something that you know needs to be fixed um, at some point. So next up, I'm going to run a quick check and check if the site ranks for its brand name. So to do that, I'll just type in uh, Simple Life Insure into Google. And as you can see, uh, it does in fact rank, and it's the number one result too, so there are no problems there. Uh, so now I'm just going to jump back to, to the site, and I'm going to run a few basic on-page checks uh, for all the most important pages on the site, starting with the home page. So to do this, I'm just going to right click and hit view page source, which will show me the HTML for the page. Uh, then I'm going to start by taking a look at the uh, title tag. 
so if you're struggling to spot this, just hit Command F or uh, Control F, I believe, on Windows and type a less than sign followed by the word title. Uh, you can then see that it gets highlighted in the HTML uh, and you can see that uh, title tag. So here the title tag reads Instant Life, uh, Instant Affordable Life Insurance Quotes uh, dash SimpleLifeInsure.com. So at first glance, this looks pretty good, you know, uh, but I want to check uh, a couple of things. Number one, is this a good length? Uh, because title tags that are too long get uh, truncated in the search results, which doesn't really look good. Uh, and number two, I want to check whether this is optimised around any worthwhile keywords, which it should be, ideally. Uh, so number one is easy to check. Just copy and paste the title tag uh, into a SERP simulator, uh, such as SERP Sim, which is the one I'm using here, uh, and it'll kick back whether or not it's too long. Uh, in this case, you can see that everything looks good. Uh, so uh, let's move on and check the uh, keywords. Uh, so to me, it looks like this title tag has been uh, formulated around the keyword um, affordable life insurance, or perhaps life insurance quotes. Uh, so I'm going to check both of these in uh, Ahrefs, site, uh, Ahrefs Keywords Explorer, rather. Uh, so if I just quickly type that in, um, you can see that both of these appear to have a decent amount of search volume. So again, you know, there's no problems there. It looks like this is quite a well-optimized title tag. Uh, so let's move on and check the meta description. Uh, so again, you can find this easily by searching. Uh, just type in the less than sign and then, uh, you know, meta, and you'll kind of get up all, all the uh, meta descriptions and title tags and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to paste this again into the SERP simulator. And as you can see, length is totally fine. And it also looks to me like it's been pretty well written. You know, it's quite a nice uh, description that kind of sums up the site uh, quite well. So finally, I'm just going to check the H1 tag on the page. Now, it's not an absolute requirement these days, but I do generally ref uh, prefer there to only be one of these on the page, so one H1 tag. And it's also best, in my opinion, if the uh, keywords are sprinkled in there as well. Uh, so on, their on this page, you can see that there are actually uh, two H1s, which are effectively just duplicates of each other. Uh, so this is not a big deal. Uh, personally, I'd prefer to remove one of them. Um, but aside from that, you know, it's a nice length. I can see that the keywords that we just checked are indeed sprinkled in. Uh, so this is another pass for this website. Uh, so I recommend um, performing these manual checks on all of the most important pages on your website. Uh, and by important, I'm generally referring to those with the most traffic. Um, you can use Google Analytics to find this out, or alternatively, if you're not using Google Analytics, you can go to Ahrefs Site Explorer, enter your domain, and then go to the top pages report, which will show you uh, the pages that perform best in terms of organic traffic. Then it's just a case of working down this list and performing the same manual checks on uh, each of those pages. But anyway, let's move on and let's get back to the crawl report uh, in Ahrefs Site Audit. Uh, so this tells us a ton of information basically, but I'm going to start by checking the HTML tags report to see if it found any other on-page errors across the site. And as you can see, it did. Uh, 44 pages with multiple H1 tags, 33 pages missing a meta description, and 7 pages where the uh, title tag is too long. Uh, oh, and there's also one page where the meta, meta description is uh, too short. Uh, so I'm not going to bore you by sifting through every single one of these errors in this video, uh, but these are issues that should at least be investigated and probably fixed at some point. Uh, so let's move on and next I'm going to go and check for duplicate and thin content. So sticking with the site audit, I'm going to go to the content quality report. Uh, and under clusters of duplicate pages, uh, you can see that it's reporting no duplicates found. Uh, so again, this is a, a pass for this uh, particular site. Um, but it's worth noting that this only looks for duplicate content on your domain, on the uh, on the domain that you've actually crawled. Uh, it doesn't check if any of our content is duplicated across other websites. Uh, to do this, you'll need to use uh, Copyscape. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to enter a URL from the site. I'll just use the home page for this example. Uh, and in this case, you can see that Copyscape has actually found a few matches. Um, but despite this, I don't think there's anything to worry about here. Um, if you look closer, these look to be triggered by the uh, disclaimer in the footer, which, uh, in all honesty, is probably just a stock disclaimer and uh, nothing to worry about whatsoever. Uh, so for this site, you know, I'm not too worried about stolen content or anything like that, so I'm not going to bother checking any more pages. Uh, but I do want to check for thin content, which is content that's kind of short and pointless and doesn't really provide any value. So 
I'll just I'll just quickly uh, hop back to a site audit and check the content quality report once again. And here I'm looking for a low word count errors, of which, uh, as you can see, this site doesn't appear to have any. Uh, so, you know, we're all good again in this instance. Uh, so next up, we've got site speed. Now, the most obvious tool to use for this is Google's PageSpeed Insights, which is a good tool uh, when it actually works. Uh, if I try this with Simple Life Insure for the homepage, uh, for example, you can see that it kicks back a uh, speed unavailable error, which is obviously pretty useless. Um, there are other tools that you can use to check site speed, such as uh, GT Metrics, uh, but actually this is something that else that Site Audit should have already checked. Uh, so jumping back again to uh, Site Audit, I'll check the performance report this time and see if there are any slow page errors. Uh, so there are in this instance, uh, and clicking forward to the uh, clicking through rather to the full report on this issue. Uh, will reveal a list of all the slow loading URLs so you can kind of investigate those individually. And you can even um, order these, uh, order this list by organic traffic uh, so you can then prioritize the fixes, which is a nice hack in my opinion. Uh, so moving on, next up I'm going to check for structured data issues. So for those of you not familiar with structured data, it's basically a type of structured uh, markup that some sites choose to add to their pages so as to supply Doodle with a more structured view uh, of that page. Uh, if you've ever seen results uh, with star ratings or reviews or uh, calorie counts or any of that stuff in the SERPs, then, uh, then you're probably familiar with the uh, structured data or at least uh, the results of it. So to test structured data, there's uh, Doodle's structured data testing tool. So basically you just enter a URL and it kicks back whether or not there are any errors with the structured data on that page. Now the site I've been using thus far uh, doesn't have any kind of special structured mar uh, data markup, so I'll use a different URL for this example, which is a pizza dough recipe uh, from MarthaStewart.com. So I paste this into the structured data testing tool and run the test. Uh, it takes back a couple of warnings: uh, the lack of an author name uh, and the lack of nutritional information for the recipe. Both of these things not a particularly big deal, but uh, worth fixing nonetheless. Okay, so before I should con uh, before I continue, I should mention that I'm just going to switch gears here and use the Ahrefs blog as the example site for the next few steps. The reason for this is because I'll need to access data from Analytics and Search Console, and I don't actually have this data for Simple Life Insure. So next step, a quick organic traffic analysis. So for this, I'm going to head over to the acquisition report in Google Analytics, and then I'm going to go to Overview and then Organic Search. So I'm also going to set the time period for the past month. Uh, and it looks like, as you can see, we're averaging around 1,800 visits a day uh, from organic search on the Ahrefs blog, which isn't too bad at all. Um, so next I'll check the landing page report. So this shows you the pages that are bringing in the most search traffic. And as you can see, uh, for the Ahrefs blog, it looks like it's our website traffic article. Uh, so finally, I'm going to set the period to the last 12 months uh, to get a sense of whether traffic or is uh, increasing or decreasing. And as you can see, it looks like it's uh, rising quite nicely actually. So if for whatever reason you don't have Google Analytics installed, you can instead use the top pages report in HREF Site Explorer to get a sense of the pages that receive the most organic traffic. Uh, so it's clear that organic traffic is moving in the right direction uh, for HREF's blog. Uh, but what about rankings? So to check this, I'll go to Ahrefs Site Explorer, enter the blog URL, and then check the organic search tab on the overview report. Uh, looking at the organic keywords graph, I can see that the rankings uh, are indeed on the increase, which again is good and is what you'd probably expect when you see a uh, rise in organic traffic as we are doing with Ahrefs blog. But actually, as we recently rewrote re re uh, our SEO tips article, I kind of want to know how that specific page is performing. So next up I'm going to enter that into the search bar and check this same graph. So it looks like there was a slight dip in January but it's now ranking for more keywords than ever which again is definitely a good sign. Uh, digging a little deeper I also want to know how it's performing for the main target keyword which in this case is SEO tips. Uh, I'll check this by searching for SEO tips in the organic keywords report and then view in the history chart. Uh, so it looks like rankings have increased uh, since the update, update in September and now the rankings are reasonably steady in positions 3 to 5, you know, hovering around that area. 
So pretty good, but still room for improvement, which leads me neatly onto the next step of the audit process actually, which is finding low-hanging keyword opportunities. So let me go back a step and view data for Ahrefs blog as a whole. And then I'm going to go to the na I'm going to navigate rather to the organic keyword report once again. And in here I'm going to filter the keywords where Ahrefs blog pages on Ahrefs blog currently rank in positions 3 to 5. And I'm also going to add a search volume filter uh, and set that at a minimum of 1,000 searches per month. Uh, so now I can see keywords that have a good number of monthly searches, uh, for which we already have rankings in positions 3 to 5. Basically, these are low-hanging opportunities. If we could increase rankings by just one or two positions for any of these keywords, it would no doubt result in a nice traffic boost. Uh, so you'll actually notice that one of these keywords on the list is SEO tips. Uh, which is definitely a keyword that we should focus on. So again, this brings me nicely onto the next step, which is a backlink profile analysis. So much like the organic traffic analysis, this isn't so much about finding specific problems and fixing them, as it is about making sure things are generally heading in the right direction. So I'll start by going to the overview report in Site Explorer and checking out the referring domains graph. So it looks like the number of referring domains is steadily increasing, as is uh, the traffic. Uh, but what kinds of anchors are those domains using when linking to us? Uh, so let's scroll down to the uh, anchors cloud and take a quick look. So it looks as though there's a mixture of anchors, but as you can see, it's mostly branded anchors, uh, which is, again, quite good. So finally, I'm going to dive a bit deeper and make sure there are no dodgy sites actually linking to the Ahrefs blog. So for this, I'll go to the referring domains report then sort the domains by domain rating from lowest to highest. Uh, so nothing is jumping out at me particularly in this report, so on the whole things I would say are okay. Uh, obviously this is a very quick and high level view, so if you're concerned about dodgy sites linking to you, then I would recommend spending more time in this report and delving a little bit deeper. Okay, so next up I want to make sure that there are no broken pages on the blog, and especially not broken pages with a lot of backlinks. So, I'll go to the uh, Best Buy Links report and then filter for 404 pages. So it looks like there are a few broken images, but uh, nothing too worrying, uh, no pages with a lot of backlinks. Uh, most of these images are likely the result of old blog posts being updated or deleted, uh, and none of them, as I say, have a lot of links pointing to them, so these are nothing really to worry about. If you do see broken pages with a ton of referring domains, then you may have issues uh, in that case, I would actually recommend checking out the full guide to finding and fixing broken links, which you can find at hrefs.com slash blog slash fix broken links. So I'm also going to check for uh, broken outbound links on the blog. And for this, I'll use the broken links report under outgoing links. Uh, so it looks like there are a few. These either need to be uh, removed or updated, ideally. Uh, which brings me to the final two steps in the SEO audit process both of which revolve around content. So the first is a content gap analysis. Uh, this basically involves finding keywords that competitors rank for, uh, yet we currently don't. Uh, so, for, so for this, I'll use the uh, content gap tool uh, within Ahrefs. So I already know a handful of competitors for Ahrefs. Uh, Backlinko, for example, Siege Media, uh, and Hobo Web. Uh, and I'm going to enter these domains as the targets in the content gap tool. Then I'll add Ahrefs blog under the but the following target doesn't rank for option. Uh, by the way, I should stress that all of these need to be set to domain mode. Uh, so finally, I'm just gonna hit show keywords to uncover any content gaps. So right away, there are uh, quite a lot of results, uh, but to filter these down, I'm gonna filter only for keywords with a search volume of at least 5,000. Uh, so now I can see a few good keywords that our competitors are ranking for, uh, yet we currently aren't. These would be well worth us creating some content around. Uh, after all, if, if our competitors are running for such terms, then what's to stop us running for them? Uh, so on to the last step of our SEO audit process, which is running a full content audit. Now, we did this a couple of years back and ended up deleting over 200 pages from the Ahrefs blog. All of these were low-quality pages that served no purpose and brought virtually no traffic to the site. But the cool part is this, our organic traffic actually increased after we deleted these pages. So what exactly did we do? Well, it was quite simple actually. We found low quality pages with little to no organic traffic, and if they had potential and could be easily improved, then we updated and relaunched them. 
If not, we deleted them and redirected the URL to another relevant page on the blog. To be honest, this is quite an in-depth topic and it's one that we plan to tackle soon with a full post on the blog, but for now, I would advise that should you choose to perform a content audit, you should avoid deleting content unless you're absolutely certain that it serves no purpose and has no value. Even then, it may be better to just improve and relaunch that content. And that just about brings us to the end of our 16-step SEO audit process. So I hope it was useful, and of course, don't forget to check out the full post on the Ahrefs blog, where you can find a much more in-depth write-up of this entire process. And again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe, because there's plenty more where this came from. Cheers, guys. <laughs>